Hi, Jessica. It's Laura Kraut here. And thank you so much for sending your video into online riders. Um, what a great thing that we're doing for people in need and in this crazy time. It's really important that we look out for the people that are in our industry. So thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed watching your video. Apples is really a cute horse. Um, you've done well on your first import and uh, bringing him from four to six is a big task. I think um, I've found that that's sometimes the hardest age to buy a horse is at four because, you know, sometimes they are, like you said, very small and 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 you think they're going to not be a big horse and then they can turn into a very large horse but that being said even though he's grown he looks like he has such nice balance and you know he's well proportioned and the only thing that I see is maybe your leg is a little short on him but he's just got such a great way about him I mean he seems to be brave he's balanced um, it looks like his mouth is good. Sometimes he gets a little uneducated, but I think that that's, that's normal for a six-year-old. Um, and yeah, if you're confident on him, then there's nothing better than that. Uh, I bought a young horse for my son thinking that I should buy him a 15-year-old, and it turns out that she was the greatest thing I ever got. So um, it looks like you're definitely doing all the right things. Uh, we'll watch your round here that you've submitted to me. Um, and it's your first one meter 15, which he seems to do it with ease. Um, the one thing I notice is he's careful. Sometimes, you know, he, sometimes he makes a bit different shape here and there. Again, that's not unusual for a young horse. Um, I think that they're oftentimes experimenting when it's a little bit close or a little bit long or just even a combination. They're trying to do different things with their bodies. But what I do like about him is he always gets up with his belly. You know, he's never belly low. So that's, that's really important. Um, I think you're confident as you go around. Your ride to the first jump was excellent. Nice and good forward distance. You, the whole way you ride around seems to be confident. Fence two is good. He makes a big jump. Fence three is good. Really good. Um, I'm going to just stop it right there and make one comment that I've noticed because I've watched you around three or four times. You could be better with your eyes in the air of the jump. And I think, you know, because you probably feel like your legs don't get around him as much as you'd like, really important is to work on keeping your balance through your eyes because your, your leg isn't going to help you as much as you'd like. So when he jumps, when he does make a big jump, when you're looking down, that causes you to snap up probably a little sooner than you'd like. Or it also, on the other flip side of it, probably makes you want to sort of clutch on and hang on um, so that you don't interfere. I think if you're really conscious of, of looking up in the middle of the jump, in the air of the jump, either looking to where you're going next or just plain look up, it's going to help your balance so much. It will help you on landing a lot. It'll help you to get back into your heel because as you come up on this next line, we'll talk about it, you're really on your toe. And when you're on your toe, you're not using the lower leg the way it should be used. Um, it, you should work on trying to get down in your heel a little bit more. And that's just... You know, that's work at home without stirrups. Um, a, a great exercise that I've been <laughs> telling a lot of people is counter cantering. And counter cantering is great for a young horse, but it's also really good for you to get your position really locked in and a good solid leg. Counter cantering, sometimes I'll even have my students drop the inside stirrup so that they really get their inside leg on them and feel what it's like to have their leg long and strong around them as they're going through the turn. Anyhow, we'll move on. You're coming through the turn to the black oxer, uh, and you can see where your toe is. It's, it's the heel is up, the toe is down. So then you end up getting a little bit on your hand, which is fine. Your eye works beautifully. I mean, you put this horse to the same distance almost every time, but as you go on, you lose a little bit of the connection with him, with his mouth. This next line was really good. He made a huge effort over the oxer. You got him back nicely. And then when you go to get him back here, he gets a little fussy. Again, not unusual for a young horse. Um, you, you did the right thing. You let go of the right moment. So you took care of the jump. And then you chose to work on the rideability afterwards, which was good. 
You gave him a lovely ride in this double because you didn't rush it and you made him, you know, get his head back down, like your trainer said, created a shape and then made it so that the double worked out nice for him. Here on the rollback, uh, your trainer's saying leg, 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 and that's correct. I think probably if I had to be picky, I'd say left leg, more left leg to get him to, to drop in a little bit and see the jump and help you on the turn. Again, not unusual for a young horse to not, you know, he doesn't know where you're going. So these are the things that you want to teach him. You know, when you want to do a rollback like that, really start with the outside leg and, and a guiding inside rein. And sometimes I'll even do a light cluck just so that I get them to start thinking something's coming. You know, they don't know it. They're not going to see it. But you want to give them a little bit of an alert that, yep, a jump is coming. And then good ones like this one will start to pick up on that and know that that's what's happening. Um, that being said, you made the, the rollback work out well. It was just probably could have been done in maybe one or two strides less without a lot of fuss. Um, you landed from that, came around to the farm vet. He jumped that absolutely beautifully. And you got the seven done. And again, he jumped that ox for outstanding, even better the second time than the first time. So what was nice to see is that for his first one meter 15 round, he got more confident as he went instead of less. And, and that's great because sometimes that doesn't always work out. Um, I think as far as moving up, uh, you've got to sort of, you and your trainer obviously want to discuss it, but I think it's a feeling, you know, if the horse stays very confident and you stay very confident, then, you know, then you gradually start to move up 120, 125. Normally the, t the biggest jumps I'll jump on a six-year-old or 130, maybe the odd 135 if they're really, really straightforward and talented and normally at the end of the year after they've had a full year. But I would say a good goal would be a, a 120, you know, max 125 as the year goes on. Sadly, we're not able to show much right now. So most of the work has to be done at home. But I think um, you're on the right track. I think you're, you're doing everything right. I think a couple of adjustments to your position will help you as the jumps get a little bit bigger and he makes those big jumps. Uh, then you can stay with him and have the confidence on landing. I think the one thing that I know from myself and from teaching a lot is when you feel like you're going to get jumped a little loose in the air, you tend to make decisions that aren't always the best because you're worrying about staying with them rather than worrying about creating the best jump. So work on those things that I talked to you about. And I hope it all goes good for you. And I really hope that we get back to showing soon and uh, take care and best of luck. Thank you. Bye.